Hey guys, Harrison here, and today I'm going to be doing a bit of an unboxing and sort of a first impressions of the Corsair K65 RGB mechanical keyboard. <music> Alrighty guys, and here it is. So the K65 RGB Rapid Fire Keyboard. So you can see it is RGB, so it's got individually addressable LEDs under every single key on the keyboard. And that means that, you know, you can individually light up every single key to get this awesome rainbow effect as well as loads of other colored effects. Individual color zones if you want, super awesome. It's also a 60% keyboard, that's why it's the K65, which means you can see there's no number pad over there, but we'll get to that when we open it up. But the main feature of this keyboard is actually the Cherry MX Speed switches. So you can see down here it's got a little diagram, and you can see that they actually have almost half the travel time of standard switches, which means that you'll actually be able to press them much faster than normal switches, maybe giving you that edge in your games. And that's about it for the front. Looking on the sides, not a whole lot on the box, just some information. And uh, <laughs> the keyboard layout is English, which is a plus. That's normally the first thing I look for in a keyboard. So it's good that this one has it. Onto the back, just some more information on the switches. You can see again that diagram on the speed, as well as information about the lighting. And also a really awesome feature, USB pass-through, which means that you plug it into the computer with this cord here and it'll actually give you an extra USB port for quick access, which is super cool. But that's about it for the box. Let me get my knife and we can open this up. Here we go though, the actual box inside the box, which also in fact came inside a box. Took us a while, but we're in there now, and I imagine it opens this way, yep. Yeah. Opening up, here we go. So straight away, greeted with that keyboard. Ooh, okay, that's interesting, we'll get to that. Um, how about under here, yep. Yeah. We have the cable, if we can get that out. Rid of that and also this is awesome they have these extra keys here you can see that keycap puller and then the keys are actually swappable on the keyboard and they've included some so WASD Q and E as well as just another set of WASD keys so you can remap those so you can find them quickly in games and whatever so that's awesome I'll just put those over here to the side we've got this big as cable it's uh Pretty massive. Uh, I don't really know if you can see that that well, but compared to a normal USB cable, it's about double the size in like thickness, girth, if you <laughs> know what I mean. But um, we'll take this out, and you can see here. You know, if I just put, ooh, ooh, ooh. if I just put that there, we've got a bit of a manual warranty, yeah, whatever warranty again. Oh, get rid of that. And it's also got this cool wrist rest. Hope you can see that, we can attach that. But this will let, I don't know, just give you somewhere to put your wrist, I suppose, for some extra comfort, so we can get this out of the way. Get rid of those bags. So we've got the rich stress, and the main attraction, the keyboard. So if I can, um, <laughs> there is quite a lot of packaging here, but if I can get it all out. Here we go. So put the wrist rest over there. Here is the keyboard. Oh, oh. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Ah. Here we go. No, so you can see here, as I was saying, it is a 60% keyboard. So it means that it is lacking the number pad, you can see there. Apart from that, though, no, I actually really like it. The keys, it's a bit hard to see, but they actually rest off the back plate quite a bit and give it a really awesome look which I like a lot. Another thing I like that Corsair does with their keyboards is these media controls buttons up here. So you've got backlight brightness for the keys I imagine, volume mute which is a really good button to have and also volume up and down. 
On the larger keyboards, they actually have a scroll wheel to scroll up and down to change the volume, but this one just has some buttons, and fair enough, it doesn't really have a whole lot of space left. Um, that's There's not a whole lot to it, apart from that, honestly. The keyboard has a bit of a texture. You can see that. It's got a different texture to the rest of the keys, which is pretty cool. And now for the actual key switches, just feeling them, it feels like... Well, if you've never used a mechanical keyboard, it'll be a bit hard to explain. Um, if you've never used a mechanical keyboard, they, compared to membrane keyboards, which is the normal ones, well, <laughs> first of all, they're pretty expensive. This one was about $150. If you want to pick one up, you can probably, I'll leave a link to that in the description. But um, yeah, they're pretty expensive. This one costs me about $150, so they're not cheap. But um, the other difference between membrane keyboards and mechanical ones is that the switches actually travel smoother, I'd say. Like, you know how membranes, you could sort of, they're either off or on, like you press down or up. These ones, they sort of slide up and down, which, I mean, it doesn't sound much, but they're pretty awesome. And they also last a lot longer. These keys are rated at 50 million presses, same as all the other Cherry MX keys, 50 million key presses, which is <laughs> a lot. Um, the actual MX speed switches. Now... This is new for Cherry, I think. I'm pretty sure it's new for this keyboard, actually. Um, they feel interesting. They feel like what... Re they feel similar to Reds, um, MX Reds, but they almost just feel like there's less... I mean, obviously, there's less travel distance, but it feels like they've just taken MX Reds and put, like, a plate underneath to reduce the amount of travel distance they have and then moved up the actuator um, which honestly I imagine is what they've done that's sort of the whole point of this no they, act they actually feel I like the way they feel they feel quite nice definitely not the blues I'm used to on my day-to-day uh, -day keyboard you can see cherry makes blues but you know much quieter smoother and for games I think they'll be a lot better just a lot smoother quicker which you'd expect for MX speeds. Apart from that though, there's not a whole lot to this keyboard. You can see here the USB pass-through and they've also got different BIOS settings for the keyboard, which is pretty awesome. It's got internal memory, so it'll store those and you can got four different BIOS settings. So you can change between those and that, on other, normally it'll just change what some of the keys do, change sort of color profiles or whatever, which is awesome. Um, apart from that, the, these set of keys over here, I love how they're laid out. You can see on some keyboards like the one I showed before, they all get smooshed into here, which can be terrible, but I like what Corsair has done by putting them separated out here. Maybe taking up a bit more space on your desk, but personally, I prefer this layout. Let me get the wrist rest, here we go. Try and attach the wrist rest, never done this before on a keyboard. To see how that goes. It looks like it just clips in like so. There we go. There we go. So this is what it looks like with the wrist rest attached. And honestly, I do... I like this as well. Without it, it feels like the keyboard is a bit high. It doesn't have... If I show you the back... Oh, sorry. It does have adjustable feet as well to raise it up. So you can see there and they've got rubber on the end which is very nice. But the wrist rest helps to sort of give it that lean, if you know what I mean, so that when it doesn't feel like there's a massive gap between your desk and your keyboard, which I like. And it'll also mean that if you're playing games for a while, you know, CSGO for six hours straight, that your hands won't get as tired holding them up, which I also like. Apart from that, the cables are nice and braided. I do like the wrist rest. It's got this soft touch coating. The font of the keys, honestly, I think is a bit ugly. Um, not much else I can say about that really. You can, these are Cherry MX switches and it's a standard layout so you can replace them, which is really nice. Um, probably will honestly. They're not, the font is just what gets me, not the nicest. That's alright though. And then you've just got some lights up here, these buttons which I like, and that about wraps it up. So just for a little size comparison, without the wrist rest. You can see here's my normal keyboard and here we've got the K65 
And you can see that compared to this keyboard, the K65 is a whole lot larger, almost like 40% larger. And I mean, fair enough, this keyboard has everything squashed together and this does spread it out. And I suppose it's just up to you which, what sort of features you're after in your keyboard. Keyboards like this, sort of more compact 60% keyboards, or I suppose almost 40% keyboards, will be better for taking traveling, taking on the go, where it, and you know, slipping it into a backpack. Whereas these keyboards might be a bit harder to travel with. They're still a whole lot smaller than full-size keyboards, but just something to consider. Maybe a bit heavier, definitely a little bit heavier, and a bit harder to slip into a backpack, but still manageable. All right, so I've just plugged in this keyboard so you can see the lights. And so you can see each key the light shines through, and also the lights turn on for these buttons as well, which is cool. And yep, so it has three brightness levels, so you can see it's off, and then one, two, and three, which is good. By default, WASD is lit up white, which is, I don't know, fair enough for playing games, whereas, and the rest of the keyboard's red, and that's one of the things you can do with this keyboard, individually lighting keys. So you can have, you know, if you're using Photoshop, you can have different keys lit up for different shortcuts, games, for the different hotkeys or whatever. Yep, yeah, one thing I've noticed is that Corsair keyboards normally have lots of macro keys, but obviously K65 is meant to be smaller, so none of those. I've noticed while doing some short typing tests that it, it's okay to type on, but they just don't feel as satisfying as, you know, back to MX Blues here. They just don't travel as far. They are quieter, so if you're trying to type in, you know, a library or something, maybe it's a bit better but they just don't have that satisfying travel and it can be sometimes a bit confusing as to whether you've actually pressed the switch or not. One thing I have noticed is that, I know I said I didn't like the font, but I sort of understand why Corsair chose it now a bit more, I think. The, it's not the best looking, but for gaming, when you just wanna see you know, which key you're pressing, it's much better. I think easier to just sort of see and recognize fast the key, which is, I suppose, the main thing you want for gaming. So by cutting open these spare keys, if we just get them out, I'll just grab this one. I just want to show you that these actually are textured the same as the space bar. So you can replace, which one, E? You can replace these and you'll get that textured feel so it's easier to find. See, they're all smooth, but if you change it, you'll be able to pick up that texture with your fingers and it'll be a bit easier to find when you're looking at the screen instead of your keyboard, which is a nice addition. So guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you enjoyed this sort of more live style video, let me know in the comments section down below. Otherwise, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.